I want you all to meet three guys who are known as the three tuners, not to be confused with the three tenors. They are Tony Benedict, not to be confused with Tony Bennett. So Hi, this is Tony Bennett. Oh, <laughs> damn. I once got a, a check from him, uh, intended to go for him uh, for a premiere movie once, but I really? had to give it back. Oh. So you were confused by as Tony Bennett at one time. Yeah, I'm still confused about that. <laughs> Okay, and so that's Tony Benedict, and then we have Jerry Eisenberg. Hello, audience. I'm Jerry Luciano Eisenberg. I'm well, glad we're not doing video because I need makeup. But this yeah. is just audio, right? You're right. This is just audio. Oh, okay. We might have some video. I don't know. Maybe later. But and then we also are joined by the third tuner, known as Willie Ito. That is correct. I'm uh, Willie Ito. <laughs> Willie Katsutoshi Ito. Ah. From San Francisco, was always uh, very interested in the art of animation. And fortunately, I retired as a retired animator uh, after 60 years in the business. Uh, I say 60 because I'm I'm still at the drawing board. Great. I don't think I said enough, Jim. Yeah, I don't think you did. Well, you have to keep working on that now, I think. <laughs> I'm semi-retired like Willie and still at the board. Okay. So is Tony. Tony. Now, you got into animation from doing... The best way to get into the animation business back then was to study hard, work hard, and then have a relative in the <laughs> animation department, which I had. Hal Sutherland was his name, and he... Got me to come in and present my stuff, and the rest is uh, history, I guess, <laughs> okay. of one sort or another. So you were you were in the Marines or the Army or something before all that? Yes, I uh -huh. was in the Marines where discipline ruled and came to Disney where none of that went on. <laughs> And then, uh, and then you got into the first job you had was at uh, on Sleeping Beauty, right at Disney? Right, uh, Sleeping Beauty as an apprentice animator, learning the trade. Great fun. Every drawing was precise and exact, only to be covered by uh, ink. But the best training in the world for animation. There were no animation schools in 1956. Did you learn, Just you just went in and just started learning? Someone was helping you, like, well, mentor they, you? Or? They had an animator, master animator with a rookie, mm -hmm. and they would work one-on-one. -on -one. That mm -hmm. was the best way to learn, and the only way. Then. Right. So how did you meet these two guys? In a bar. Yeah? <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh-oh. Uh... -oh. uh <laughs> We met, it's a very small business, and uh, we each kept bumping into each other at different studios. I think it would be hard to pin it down the exact uh, time we hooked up, unless Jerry's fabulous memory would come up with something. Yes, I remember our anniversary. Ah. You, you always do that. August 61. Wow. It's Hardly a man is now alive who remembers that famous day and year. Yeah, well, I didn't meet when uh, the animator I was working for at uh, Warner's, we were doing, we were animating commercials on the sides for Bill Hanna. But I used to pick up and deliver, but we didn't meet that way. It was only when I started there on staff. Yeah, and we were looking for a good center for a Hamburg Bear basketball team, and you... No, I got my friend Bill Joyce. He was taller. Yeah, but... What uh, were we, we forwards we, or guards? At least here we're not too tall for radio. Yeah, <laughs> for radio. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Willie, so how did you meet these two other guys? <clears throat> or did you meet Well, I first? <clears throat> excuse me, I actually knew Jerry before. Mm -hmm. He came to work at Warner Brothers, and I was uh, assisting an animator named Ken Harris. And Ken was, um, uh, well, Chuck, you might say, uh, typecasted him on doing a lot of dancing scenes. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I worked on classics like What's Opera Doc and One Froggy Evening with Jay Michigan Frog. Right. 
And uh, an opportunity came where I was going to be um, leaving Warner Brothers to join Bob Clampett's studio on the uh, Beanie and Cecil show. And so I gave notice and left, and Jerry came in and uh, replaced me because Ken liked his work also. So, mm. um, And so we met uh, together uh, at Warner Brothers uh, originally. And um, then about a year later, I um, wrapped up with Bob Clampett on the Beanie and Cecil series. And um, I guess at that time, Hanna-Barbera was really scouting a lot of talent because they were one of the busiest studios in town. And so I got a call, and I um, took the job and then walked into the uh, layout department, and there was Jerry, so we had kind of a reunion. Mm -hmm. But I also had a reunion with my mentor. His name was Iwo Takamoto, who hired me originally at Disney and put me through that so-called intricate and somewhat brutal training <laughs> to <laughs> on on Lady and the Tramp, and it just happened to be that uh, iconic scene of the uh, spaghetti kissing scene, and that that scene had to be just perfect, you know. Right. And so I I went through that type of training, which later helped in my career, you know, and oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so so I walk into the uh, layout room at Hanna-Barbera, and there's Evil and Jerry, so I uh, had quite a nice reunion, and then it was later uh, that I met Tony, because he was now in the story department, ah. uh, and uh, he was Joe's fair hair boy, which <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, are you going to talk about Ewo more than me? I think so. No. <laughs> Do you have any other favorite like moments that you guys worked on scenes or anything? Well, I think uh, those two classics with Chuck Jones. Yeah. Uh, because um, uh, One Froggy Evening was one of those one shots. Right. And uh, so we did it and um, finished the picture. And then it became another iconic classic uh -huh. from Chuck Jones. Yeah. Right. And then, of course, uh, What's Opera, Doc, and the Wagner uh, oh, yeah. music and tape off <laughs> and Kill the Wabbit. And, yeah. And uh, suddenly that became a classic. And yeah. uh, But Chuck had a lot of classics, of course, as far as I'm concerned. You oh, know. yeah. Uh, but those two were the standouts. And then my other, I guess you might say, highlight of my career was uh, I always wanted to do character designs when I was with Chuck. Mm -hmm. And occasionally uh, I would be able to do a, 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 you know, incidental character for one of his films. And um, But when Bob Clampett, studio called and offered me a position to go over there because Beanie and Cecil was time for Beanie and it was all hand puppets. Mm -hmm. And so when Mattel bought the show as an animated show, uh, he needed a character designer to go and transform oh, the puppet okay. into animation. Right. So that was my initial uh, job when I joined Bob Clampett. And then when we went into production, I was uh, doing a lot of the uh, layout and subsequent uh, uh, incidental characters. But unfortunately, that stint only lasted a year. Mm. And um, so joining Hanna-Barbera was my next career for 14 years. Wow, okay. Yeah, so what about you, Tony? Do you have a favorite thing that you worked on? I mean, you worked on a lot of stuff. Jetsons were the best. Yeah. Astro was a wonderful character. And, you know, Hanna-Barbera was very new, unique from 1987 to about 66 or 7. They, uh, they were new to the, uh, the networks who didn't quite understand how these films were made, mm -hmm. but they were getting great ratings. 
Yogi and Huck were actually watched on TV in bars at 5 o'clock. <laughs> and they found out that adults love this stuff. Yeah. That, though, that's what brought the Flintstones in in primetime television. And we also had the uh, a situation where the advertisers were not very much involved at all. We could write shows that would get on the air pretty much the way we wrote them. Oh, right. There was, uh, writing was different. We had, huh. we didn't have type writers. Right. Writers all knew how to draw and understood animation, so that made it a lot easier <clears throat> down the production line. Right. And the freedom we had was, I think, never been duplicated. To write a story and have a single credit on prime time network TV, getting last was it a single achievement? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think anyone can get one like that now. But it was a lot of uh, humor and laughing. That humor was the parlance of the game. So, then what happened? <laughs> You also mentioned that Hanna Barbera they didn't have typewriters; that you just would draw it out and come up with a storyboard, and that was how you wrote things out and visually, and came up with jokes and and you pitched it to uh, Joe Barbera, who usually gave you the thumbs up and just said, "Well, go he, off and do he, it." <laughs> he he was who uh, we had to institute no one else. Mm-hmm. Uh, Either Joe would come with an idea for a show, or I would. We would toss it around, and then I would go back and to do a rough storyboard, bring it back in in three or four days, and we would thrash it all out again, mm-hmm. then go back and do more of a finished board that would be later turned into a production board. That's pretty much the way it went down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and there is a there's some thing that I saw on YouTube, which was a story meeting that I guess was orchestrated to yeah, show totally how creative. Fake. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty funny because yeah. you're in it and you're going, yeah, I got some Magilla Gorilla ideas. Was yeah. yeah, I got ten 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 jokes there. I can put yeah. that in, and the other guys are going, yeah, well, I could do this too. And it was just like yeah. a Mickey Rooney movie. <laughs> <laughs> it was because yeah. it's so funny to see Joe, it's, Hannah, and Har- <laughs> uh, Barbera oh, yeah. there, and they're just like, you know. <laughs> People love pet shops. <laughs> yeah. Why they all go to pet shops and and they you know the kids love the stuff. Yeah, we could do that. You know, and it's just Alan Dinehart, who was a producer <laughs> on a show, said yeah. that Joe got the idea for Magilla Magilla by seeing his reflection in a pet store. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember Bill Hand that t- trying to stumble over the perfect pet store line? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't get off, off at all. That's and funny. He, wow. And you said you could come up with 10 or 12 banana jokes, right? That's right. I was trying to remember that. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> I can do 12 banana stories in one week. Something like that. Yeah, me and uh, Sandy Sandifer and oh, Sandy, Alex Lovey. Uh, uh, who else was that, that, uh, that filming... This, uh, the director guy, wasn't it? Uh, wasn't Lou Marshall part of the story crew at that time? The what? Lou Marshall. Lou Marshall, that's yeah, what he I was doing storyboards and Paul yeah. Summers. You're right. Uh, Alex but, Lovey, too. Yeah. Yeah. Alex was doing drawings of it, but we still have them. And Alex gags could draw with both shows hands. On. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Alex could draw both hands. Both hands. Yeah. Wow. He wanted to get paid double time for that, oh. but Hannah didn't, didn't go for it. But he was equally uh, <laughs> adept at uh, trying with both hands. Oh, and and uh, Iwo Takemoto, yeah. tell that story, Jerry, about Iwo and Hatsu.